Well guys, let's see how this works. I, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be the first ball I bowl in quite a while. Alrighty, follow the string, and I run up short. Whoa, wasn't too bad. I wonder if that's worked. All right, so I've just bowled one ball, and uh, let's crack out six. My first bowl back in quite a while. I have quite a few cool technical ideas that I'm um, keen to sort of discuss, and I've got the focus balls here, which work a treat. Um, just to start, I'm, not, I'm honestly not too fussed about much, except for just trying to be relaxed and find some rhythm. So I'm gonna follow the string. Hope the run-up's good. No ball, shit. Oh. And that's oh, really good to a left-hander, but not so good to a right-hander. But look again, this isn't anything about trying to nail anything. In theory, if I can get my alignment uh, towards off stump, then what I'll find is everything else is going to very nicely, um, well, go towards off stump. If I can release the ball with a nice wrist, then I should be able to get a bit of, a bit of swing. So for the string, better run up. Hmm. You probably see there the seams kind of angled towards sort of fine leggish leg slip, which I did have a bit of an issue younger when I was falling away like this. Something I worked on with my bowling coach, Simon Ferros, bowl strong, absolute legend of a bloke. And what I want to work on here is, um, yeah, just making sure I'm well aligned towards my target. And yeah, what I said before. Ugh, that's much better. Fuck, that's a good ball. So seam was nice and vertical there. I don't know if you saw it, but it also hit the seam and moved in towards the stumps, which I think is a fast bowler. If you can get the ball swinging away and cutting back in, that's money for jam, ladies and gentlemen. All right. It seems vertical. I want to see if I can get it more angling towards uh, the slips. So what I want to try and do is kind of get my timing of hip shoulder separation right. So I'm going to need to kind of access a little bit more rotation out. So when I come back in, I've got some more to use. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> well, I have accessed more rotation out, but I've just reminded myself of something really, well, obvious or like common that a fast bowler will try and do. Because I took myself out and it's sort of unnatural for me to go so far across myself, it means that my body kind of wants to bring itself back in too early. And so I've ended up bowling an in-swinger because I've kind of brought myself back too quickly to get that perfect timing for an out-swinger and that release point, which again, I'd be more than happy to have both of those deliveries in my arsenal because who doesn't want to swing the ball both ways? But look, this is my sixth ball, I think, so we're not going to be you know, too hard on ourselves. But uh, we're slowly building up some intensity here. So, get my string line straight. Eventually, I might put some cones out looking at this footage. Oh, I the string. Shit, run up. Oh, no, that was terrible. Okay, well, they're not all, they're not all gonna be great. Ugh. This lapel's pinching on my chest here. That's not what you want. Uh, is that four balls? Do you have any more? I think so. Okay. I'll come back and find the rest later. Okay. But that's, um, yeah, it's the first six sort of slowly working back into it. I think what I'll do now is have a look at this footage and um, see what I want to set up constraints wise. So let's um, see how we go now for over two. I'm not going to set up any constraints just yet because I've decided I want to get an extra, an extra camera angle. I've got the laptop, I've got the iPad here, so why not? <laughs> it might make the video footage a little bit more appealing. But um, if you can see the drill from this camera, all I've got is a nice piece of string. I haven't bowled in quite a while, so I want to kind of feel some um, alignment. 
essentially. So, you know, follow the string, follow the string, follow the string. If the run-up's good, and uh, away we go. So, it was quite undercut, I think. You know, pushing that one a little bit, a little bit wide. So, maybe trying to, like, force that kind of an outswinger, which is something that I kind of want to make sure I'm not doing. I want to make sure I'm getting my energy behind the ball. So, that's what I'm going to cue this time. Using the string as my visual. Run up's not great, but who cares? Behind the ball. So slightly, I think, better. But the fact that I'm just kind of cruising through without a guided run up is kind of putting off my timing. And that's um that's actually as easy as it can be. Sometimes when you when your run up doesn't quite work out as as, as rhythmically and fluently as you like, it can really mess with your delivery sequence. And coaching a guy from KC last night, that was something that we, we looked at. When he was moving off the string line during his run up, it did cause issues for him later down the track. So with that in mind, I'm going to follow the string. And that one swung way down leg. Always like really nice to a left-hander, depending on how you want to look at it. But uh, but definitely felt better as well. I think I'm 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 um, facing some of my personal common uh, technical flaws, which is when I was younger, I really used to fall away to the side, a lot of back issues. So it was getting my alignment nice. One thing I have been working on is um, how I use my front arm or my upper body with the front side and the bowling side to keep myself in a nice rotation, not side flexion. It's something I was doing when I was bowling four or five months ago, um, which I think now I need to kind of um, focus on that because at the moment I feel like I'm just running through, following the string, but I don't feel like what my upper body is doing um, is getting me into a good position at ball release. So let's think about... Oh, that's the one. Quicker as well, if I'm just eyeballing it. So that's... um. It's interesting, you know, as a fast bowling coach, I have a thousand thoughts on my mind that I like to kind of feed through with other bowlers, and then I always simplify it at the end to give them one sort of a cue. For me personally, now I've had my, my fast bowling journey for, you know, many, many years. So it's easy to kind of like forget something I did back then. Uh, I have to remind myself of something I'm doing now, which is probably really good where having a journal about what works, what doesn't work, is really good to keep, because I probably could have checked that at the start of the session to then obviously give myself a guide. But by the same token, trial and error, um, as I'm aware of what I'm doing, that's something that I have for myself, I can then problem solve, remember that this worked, this didn't work, that's how we go through. So that was nice, I'm gonna keep that same cue, thinking about using my front arm, keep myself nice and level through my shoulders so I can power that rotation through and get my energy nicely behind the ball. So, here we go. Oh. Again, run up, frustrating. I tried to make sure I was bowling somewhere around the crease line. Um, but sort of mistimed myself somewhere around here. And, and it's funny, you can just see like, just how important, <laughs> how important your run up is. Because it's, uh, it's an issue. Now you probably could have said that I should have figured out the run up first, but given I'm just sort of rolling through, I've decided not to. But after this last ball, I think I will. So, same thing. And that was a bit better. So, I think I definitely have to organize my run up because if I'm not getting this nice kind of consistent um, flow into the crease, then obviously it doesn't really matter what I, what I attempt to cue here because what's happened previously in the chain is going to compromise me. Now, I'm coming off a, well obviously a shorter run up, but there's no real set kind of distance. So I'm gonna have to think about how I am going to, um, geez, how am I gonna test this run up? Might have to do the, uh, the old school just, <laughs> I'm gonna run it out from here. Gosh, this feels so village. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move this back a bit. Give myself a bit more space. 
Now we're real close to this camera now. <laughs> All right, I was about here. All right, let's see how this feels. Oh, better, I think. But I'm obviously going to have a bit of a, a teasing process as I'm getting this through. What I have noticed is um, these lines are all over the shop, which is, well, probably, I guess, expected. Like, I can't control the outcome. I can, obviously, I can attempt to do, like, have a cue or some sort of, like, drill to guide me with where I want the ball to go. But if there's something happening as I'm going through, then obviously it makes sense that there could be issues happening further down. So... Oh, it's much nicer. So, even though I sort of went over leg stump, with the first ball I felt everything kind of really flowing nicely. And I think, I don't think the ball swung. So, line towards leg stump. Now, I love a ball that goes leg stump and then swings away, i.e. goes from leg stump to off stump. So, I feel like, yeah, we're starting to find some, um, find some rhythm. I'm going to try with the double-sided ball now, so I can have a look at the same position. I've just, it's funny, because I've just sort of jogged out run up here, so I'm attempting to replicate that same kind of jog through run up, which isn't the easiest thing to do. But if I stay nice and relaxed, I don't rush it, which is when I'm rushing it, that's when I get into issues, so. And that went, again, same kind of line, so. I can see that I'm starting to get my lines, get my alignment, which is wonderful. Um, I'm not getting the seam right, so potentially I'm rotating too early. I'm releasing the ball slightly left to vertical. But it's something that I'm gonna have to um, be conscious of. Now, how can I work with that? All right, I'm going to uh, I'm take my body out a little bit. I'm gonna do that as my takeoff. I'm gonna look to bring this in this across and that's going to help me to get that sort of position but then i'm going to have to stay relaxed otherwise i'm going to mistime it so <sighs> mistimed but good i feel like i've got the rotation coming out but then it's sort of you know just because you get one part right you still got that natural movement that you then need to adjust so this is where I might be doing quite a lot of volume off a shorter step just to um, like get a, a bit more volume up and a bit of a feeling for what it's like to use that kind of rotation coming through. So but we'll go with these three. I'm going to follow that because I've done it before. I believe I can do it again. All it takes is one ball. There we go. Just a little bit more patience. And away you go. Reminds me of batsman that I look for in a batsman. He's trying to play the ball too early. Okay, he's kind of moving at the ball. Impatient, moving too early. Same thing happens in bowling sometimes. So I just need to do what I said before. All right, two more. Let's talk more action, eh? Oh. A nice tidy one outside off. But it feels good to be honest. I wasn't feeling too great yesterday. Coccyx sort of give me a few issues. I have an extra lumbar vertebrae, I have an L6. There's an interesting little tidbit. So I have been prone to back issues in the past. So it kept me out of bowling for quite a while in my formative years. That's a nice fancy word. All right, last one. Full string. There we go. It's just, it's so amazing when you just, you're just patient and <laughs> they're like just being patient with how I'm trying to bring myself back in. If I'm tensed, if I'm stiff, I'm just going to rush. And I know that whenever I'm rushing, I'm bringing myself back in too early, which means I get too open too early. Our body kind of gets ahead of itself and I end up in these sorts of positions where I have to compensate or I have to side flex to give my body more time to release the ball because I need that more time. Otherwise, I wouldn't release the ball towards the stumps. I'd probably bowl it. Well, let's see. 
if I'm speeding up too early, I want to release it here, and I don't side flex to give myself a bit more time to get to here, then push the ball, well then I'll be throwing the ball up like that. Doesn't quite seem ideal, does it? But uh, yeah, look, what's that, three overs down? Fitness needs a little bit of a, bowling fitness needs a little bit of work. But uh, I think I might just pause the video here for a second, see how it looks. All right, so back for overs four. Just looking at the footage, and one of the things I've sort of picked up, which is something that I have done quite a lot in the past with my front arm, and obviously that side flex that I used to have is, I kind of come up, I don't always fully extend that elbow, and I kind of pull myself here. So I'm pulling myself into side flexion. Now, am I doing that because of something that's happening, you know, in the chain? Um, I could say that my run up was kind of like running on a tightrope, which is something that I'm definitely gonna have to continue to work back on with my running mechanics work as I start to get myself back into that. Um, I do think that my running mechanics are, are, are quite good. Um, obviously, I've been practicing for quite a while, but you can also see that obviously no one's perfect and there's something here that I can sort of work on, see if I can keep my feet under my hips a bit more. So yeah, what I'm gonna look at now is just thinking about how I'm using my front, my, my whole body and how I'm using my front arm to work with my body. I wanna make sure that even though I might not fully extend it, I still wanna make sure I'm not kind of pulling myself in a side flexion and I'm pulling myself almost like down the wicket, keeping my shoulders level, which would mean I can use my front side to rip through my bowling side and that's gonna really help me to get that energy behind the ball through the crease and make sure I'm not side flexing then rotating, which is, as you'll see in the, as you've already seen, um, that's when I am, you know, pushing the ball down the leg is just hooping off. So, uh, lower back on the left side is a little bit stiff, but that's to be expected, first time bowling in a while. Um, and I'll watch that over the next couple of days. So, pull the string. Oh, I didn't tip right up this time, oh well. Just nice and gentle. That was, uh, yeah, I knew that time that I'd obviously forgotten everything that I'd done previously about the run up. And so I just kind of really slowed it down and bowled 17 foot no ball. Luckily there's no side on footage because I definitely have a bunch of oh, bloody twats telling me it's, oh, it's no ball. So let's remember where I was when I was bowling properly and uh, yeah, cruise through. So following the string, just thinking about that nice rotation. Oh, crazy. It's interesting when you, you know, now how it changes the actual skill and the ball, like that one I didn't quite get great, but you could just see that one's hooping away outside the off stump. So one thing I can do, is who knows, I might, yeah, let's do it now. So clearly where I'm getting my energy behind the ball, it's, um, I'm just not happy with the lines I'm creating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my run up. I'm gonna change the line. So I'm still gonna be bowling in a straight line, but all I've done is take the angle out a bit wider, which means that now, I'm, um, I'm coming in a slightly wider angle. It's still a straight line on the angle, but let's see if now when I, when I try to rotate, it's only if I stay nice and tall, I can keep that sort of ball that's going off there. Now as I change the line, it's a bit straighter. So, where's my run up? Remind myself of this. It's a different part of coaching yourself. Yeah, so that was, that was definitely better. Uh, I, must, I, I like the line there a lot better. If you guys are watching this, you're welcome to kind of <laughs> go back a little bit, come forward. Maybe as I'm talking through, you might, and you hear my thoughts as I reflect, you can sort of take them back and look at the footage and see like, I wonder what Stubbsy was feeling there. See if you can pick out some differences, but this is just, uh, all I've done here is I've adjusted the constraints based on you know what I'm seeing out there. So instead of me trying to change my technique, what if I also change constraints? So that now when I align myself a little bit differently, you know, I might end up creating the outcome that I desire. That was right over middle stump. So here we go. This is a, this is a good progress. Um, I've identified front arm, stuff like that, but the, the body, I don't just want to say front arm because that's definitely not, it's not a front arm issue. It's a, a whole upper body timing issue and how I'm using it. But that's something I didn't think about the front arm, but you can already see that by changing the line and what I've already felt so far, 
is starting to show some progress. So now I'm going to remember the, how I want to use my body. Oh, I fucked that one up. God damn it. A little extra fitness, why not? Oh, yeah, perfect. Much nicer. So that time I was trying to keep the front arm in a bit more, really use that kind of rotation. One thing I've discussed in some previous posts is uh, the palm facing the, the batsman. And one of the reasons for that cue is, if you think about what my arm has to move to get the palm there, I have to exhale and rotate my shoulder. It brings the elbow in and it keeps my forearm almost on a straight line towards the batsman. So if you usually hear like, get that arm into your ribs, well, one way you can do that is to think palm facing the batsman. So there's a little tip for you. Not tip, there's a coaching uh, cue with context on a goddamn tip. All right, last ball this this six. Let's try that palm towards the batsman. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, gosh, why didn't I try that one sooner? Well, that was swell. I was using an older ball here, so didn't quite swing as much, but that was straight. That was going straight through um, sort of fourth stump, I reckon. Um, five balls. Fuck, I'm blowing five ball overs. That's not good. Um, I've probably got one somewhere hidden in here. Or maybe I don't. Maybe it was five. Um, but yeah, isn't it? Oh, there it is. So interesting. Um, <laughs> how I've been trying to figure out this this coaching process on my own. And look, I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm essentially reflecting on how I'm feeling. Um, I do have some footage so I can sort of come back to, but you don't want to overanalyze yourself because paralysis by analysis, you want to avoid. And I am an overthinker. So using that as going, because I am an overthinker, that's my strength. I'm going to use it as a strength. I'm going to think my way through some good stuff, but then at the end of it, I'm going to come back with a nice simple cue I can execute. And you see that one thing I've tried to do each ball is to have something nice and simple in my mind that I can sort of execute. Um, and I've kind of felt what I don't want to do, which is, you know, here, and I've felt what I do want to do, and now I'm using what's in my toolbox to problem solve my way across. So usually you get a two and a half minute break or so, but we're just going to roll into over five, which will be my last. That felt really good. Definitely some more energy behind it. So let's see if we can sort of ramp up just a little bit. So palm towards batsman again. Oh! Oh, fuck, that's a good ball. I'm on fire here. Jesus. Get me back in. Just quietly, this is also just how good I am as a fast bowler. It only takes me one session to get back to my best. If any of my mates watch this, they'll give me some shit for that, but you know, you may as well be confident and not confident. All right, palm towards Bassman again. We're on to something here. I'm gonna change the seam just a little bit, see if we can get more outswing. Oh, oh there you go, fuck off. Didn't swing though. And in fairness, that's probably half volley. <laughs> so we say that one's been either hit straight back to me and I've socketed it with my foot. It's probably not the best idea. I hope you can get down to it because you don't want to be breaking your ankle. But uh, too full, all right? So energy behind it, but I want to put it into the wicket. Oh. Oh. You know when you kind of bowl a good ball that you didn't really intend to? Well, I think that was a Yorker. It was definitely up there, and that's hit off stump. I didn't intend it, but it didn't count as far as I'm concerned. I said I want energy behind the ball to hit the wicket, and I bowled it too full. So what I'm gonna try and do now is bowl a bouncer. I'm not really gonna try and bowl a bouncer, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cue myself to come so far back of a length that hopefully now it kind of finds myself somewhere in the middle. So let's see how this goes. Um, and using that same kind of cue with the palm face the batsman. Oh, yeah, nice. See, that's a good back of a length. And uh, look, there's my problem solve. So a little something for you guys to see how I'm sort of feeding through it. And then what I can use to uh, bring myself from here to here, which is what we all want in life. Oh, there are two more balls here. That was nice, I like that, so I'm gonna um, not talk and just repeat. And you mind the ball. Oh, oh, 
that was really good. Really good. That one actually swung away. I reckon that might have started on either middle and leg, and that swung away, and probably taken top of off. You guys can zoom in on the footage if you want to critique me, but I'm, um, I'm thrilled with that one. That's actually my best ball so far today. Uh, my second last one. One thing about bowling your best balls is that sometimes when you bowl one, you don't really know why you bowled it. And then when you try to explore it, the next ball ends up being a really shit one, which is quite interesting because often when you bowl those good balls, you don't always know like what it exactly was that made it that perfect one. Now in knowing this, I don't want to think, okay, how can I do that again? Because I'm not giving myself a specific cue to bowl. What I'm gonna tell myself is what I've been telling myself so far the whole time, I need my energy behind it. This is in here. I'm trying to, I'm not saying I'm gonna hit the wicket because when I did that, the two balls weren't quite full. I'm almost gonna say I'm almost gonna try and bowl a bouncer of sorts. So here we go again. And that was straight over off stump. So I'm happy with that. I kind of pulled down on that one a little bit. I probably pushed it just a touch. That's what I felt, whether I did it or not, is, um, well, you can see on the footage. Uh, but interesting. I hope um, you guys enjoy this uh, hopefully insightful piece of content where you kind of get to see a coach coach himself. And I hope I've done myself justice as a coach. Uh, I feel pretty good as a player. So I think this was quite a successful little um, project. I'm down here at Kampong CC in Utrecht, uh, Netherlands. I'm helping them out with some stuff at the moment, given I've got some free time and, and yeah, really excited to sort of have some time here to do some my own bowling and give myself, you might say an off season or a pre-season for the first time in, um, in quite a while. So I think you know, I could do quite a few of these and, uh, Hopefully it's interesting to people. If you guys have questions, you can sling them in the comments section on the YouTube thing with Jig or on Instagram if it gets posted there. Um, and yeah, if you guys are curious about coaching, well, there's always an inquiry form linked somewhere on the like caption thing. Like you can, it's linked in my bio on Instagram. Um, so yeah, go through that, contact me. And if you, it's only for those who want to invest. You know, I don't do free tips. I wouldn't be able to do this if I did free tips. I have to find a different job. I don't know, counting or, I don't know what else I'm good at, to be honest, so we'll just stick with no free tips. Um, just proper, proper coaching, like what I did today, but instead of being doing it to myself, I'm doing it to you. Much love.